Welcome back, I'm That Chemist, and today we're going to be deciding which chemical has the most annoying name. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's look at Rocketine. Rocketine is a molecule that resembles a rocket, hence its name, Rocketine. I personally find this a little bit annoying because it doesn't really look like a rocket and it's not super necessary. So I think this one can probably go into A tier, maybe we'll even put it into S tier later on. Now a similar one that's a little bit upsetting is Snoutine. Snoutine has this interesting 3D structure, it's hard to draw with our typical 2D drawing techniques. Although I did it in 3D so you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like. This is supposed to somehow resemble a pig snout, and I think that this is terrible. This can go right into S tier. Now let's talk about Proton Sponge. Proton Sponge has a unique structure that makes it extremely basic. So this is a base that's like a sponge. It absorbs protons very easily, and it can even do so somewhat slowly. Normally for a dimethyl aniline like this, it wouldn't be too good of a base, but because of the structure and where the orbitals of the nitrogens are pointed, it ends up actually being a pretty strong base. This is of course a brand name from Sigma Aldrich. This one's not too bad, but it's a little bit annoying because Proton Sponge doesn't sound like the name of a molecule. I think it would be fair to put this one at least in B tier, because Proton Sponge is kind of a dumb name. Now Penguinone. Penguinone is really cute, and that makes me a little bit less annoyed. The only thing remarkable about this is it looks slightly like a penguin. So this is a little bit cute. It is also a little bit annoying because it's got nothing to do with penguins, but it does have a ketone, so the own is at least fair. I think we can put Penguinone into D tier, because it's not too too bad, and I think a lot of viewers are going to enjoy this. If you like Penguinone, make sure you leave a comment down below. Now let's talk about bowtie dyeing. So I really like the way bowtie dyeing looks. I think it's a pretty awesome looking structure, although it's extremely unstable. The other name for bowtie dyeing is spiropentadiene, and I actually like the name spiropentadiene quite a bit. So bowtie dyeing, it is annoying. It's pretty hard to be upset with someone who's wearing a bowtie. So bowtie dyeing, I'm not too upset with you. We'll put you into E tier. Now complicatic acid. Complicatic acid is pretty complicated. The structure has several different rings. Its name comes from the fact that it's a natural product found in Sterium complicatum. The name is fairly apt, although I think the aptness of its name is complicated by the fact that I'm getting rather annoyed by it. I think that one can go into B tier. Let's talk about the bacon. The bacon is awesome. It's got a very cool name, bringing home the bacon. It's a semi-synthetic opioid and it used to be used in Europe. I want to clarify something that I said in a previous video about opiates versus opioids. Opiates are compounds found in the opium poppy, although opioids are still active at the opioid receptors, but they are usually synthetic, or at least semi-synthetic. So the bacon, it isn't that annoying. I think anybody who's heard this is pretty amused by it, so we can put the bacon right into F tier. How about megaphone? Megaphone! Megaphone is a cytotoxic neolignin from the plant Maniba megaphyla. It's got this interesting trimethoxy motif in it. It's got a ketone. And whoever named this was having a field day. I think it's a little bit funny. Is it annoying? Maybe slightly. I think we could probably put Megaphone into D tier. It really doesn't have any business being called Megaphone, but it does have a ketone and it ends in own. So that's at least fair. Now what's not okay at all is NanoKid. And NanoKid is one of several people looking molecules called nanoputians. I wonder if anyone will ever synthesize a nanocentipede. This is supposed to be made in an effort to promote education to the youth, although I think formats like this video are far more effective than someone doing several cross-coupling reactions to make a molecule that looks like a person. In my mind, NanoKid is one of the most cringe molecules to have ever been made. If you like NanoKid, you can let me know down below. I think NanoKid easily S tier. This is probably the most S tier molecule in this whole tier list. How about Dinocap? Dinocap has a funny name. It would be funnier if there was an R in Dinocap. And it's actually a foliar fungicide with a caricidal activity. While I've drawn this as one compound, it's actually a mixture of two compounds. I've just drawn one of them to simplify it. So Dinocap, not a very annoying name. It's a little bit weird. Doesn't have too much to do with the molecule. We can probably put it into D tier because it's not too upsetting, but it is a little bit out of place. Now Cyclone, this one's been taking the world by storm. I actually have used this one in an undergrad lab where we made tetraphenyl naphthalene. This is done through generating benzene and doing a Diels alder and it eliminates carbon monoxide. Cyclone can be used as an intermediate for the synthesis of several building blocks in organic chemistry and it's also used in organometallic chemistry. Cyclone is a cool name, but most of the time people don't call this cyclone. They call it tetraphenyl cyclopenadienone, although that's kind of a mouthful and cyclone is the way you feel when you try and say that. So tetraphenyl cyclopenadienone. I think you can go into C tier, which is appropriate because it starts with a C. 
theobromine. Theobromine is the compound in chocolate that if you give to your dog, the dog will probably get sick and you might need to take them to the vet. Theobromine is also made when our body metabolizes caffeine, amongst other xanthine derivatives that are made. If you haven't heard about xanthines before, I'd encourage you to check out this video that I made about gravel, which has diphenhydramine as well as 8-chlorothiophylline. And it's interesting to talk about xanthines because everybody drinks coffee, but they never talk about the other xanthines. Now, the reason that theobromine has an annoying name is, where's the bromine? Well, it turns out that it's in the name of the plant that it comes from. So, theobromine kills puppers, and it has a terrible name. So, I think theobromine can also go into S tier. Really dumb name, especially when the name of the plant is the same as a common element. I think if you have the name of an element in your chemical, but it doesn't have that element, that's extremely misleading. Which reminds me of fluorine. Not fluorine, fluorine. Fluorine is fluorescent, hence the name fluorine. And you might be thinking, uh, that's pretty dumb. It sure is. Fluorine is often seen in protecting groups such as the FMOC group, which can be deprotected under basic conditions. And it makes it extremely challenging to discuss what you're doing in research meetings. Because are you talking about fluorine? No, I'm talking about fluorine. Fluorine is another S tier chemical here because it is super annoying. Destruction E. Perhaps you'd prefer it if I said destruction E. Destruction is hard for me to say because it just violates everything I know about the English language. Destruction is a cyclic peptide toxin secreted by an entomopathic fungus. It has an interesting name. You can see that it's also a cyclic peptide derivative, although the final linkage here is a lactone rather than an amide or a lactam. An interesting name. I don't think it's too relevant to what it does, but it doesn't really take away from it as much either. I think this one can probably go into C tier. Not too offensive. Largezole. Now, Largezole is a really upsetting name, in my opinion. It's a potent and class L selective histone deacetylase inhibitor purified from marine cyanobacteria. Is it a large azole? It's a pretty large azole. This one's slightly amusing, but it's also kind of annoying. I think we could probably put this one into D tier. Maybe this belongs in C tier, but it is a little bit annoying. Now, what is really annoying is antipain, but it's also kind of true in terms of its function. So maybe we'll give this one a break. Antipain is an oligopeptide that's isolated from actinomycetes, and it's used in biochemical research as a protease inhibitor of trypsin and papain. And because it's an inhibitor of papain, that makes it antipain. And so that's amusing and slightly annoying. If I had to describe how I would feel, I would say it's like 60% amused, 40% annoyed, which is pretty good for the biologist, so I think we can probably put this one into E tier. Now, discodermalide. Discodermalide is an amusing name because I've worked in a group that does total synthesis and I hear about ermalides and olides all the time in the context of polyketide natural products. This specific one is found to stabilize microtubules and it was discovered from the deep sea sponge Discodermia dissoluta. So discodermalide, definitely the molecule also resembles the action of pointing your hand as if you were in a disco. And I think, hey, we'll give it a break. It's got a kind of cool name. Why don't we put this one right into F tier? Does not annoy me very much. And it rolls off the tongue. Discodermalide. Discodermalide. Just, you want to say it all day, right? Discodermalide. Denatonium. Denatonium is a chemical that's often seen in almost any consumer product that you're not supposed to eat in the form of denatonium benzoate. This is what Nintendo puts in their game cartridges when your little brother tries to lick them or your dog tries to eat them so that the dog will spit it out. And denatonium is the most bitter chemical to be discovered, or so it's claimed. I would like to see someone challenge this and make an even more bitter compound. I think you could at the very least deuterate this and maybe it would be slightly more bitter. I'd be interested to see what happens. And the reason it's called denatonium is because you put it in stuff to denature it, like denatured ethanol might have denatonium benzoate. It could also have other chemicals, depending on where you live and what the regulations are. But it's used to denature stuff, hence the name denatonium. And the eum is because it's positively charged. Now, I think this is a pretty dumb name. It is honest in terms of what its applications are, but I think it's a really annoying name to say unironically. So denatonium, I think you can also go right into S tier. Nonanol. You might be thinking, this reminds me a bit of butanol, but this one's nonanol. This does not have four carbons, but rather nine. This one's present in anals. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this one's present in perfumes. Uh... <laughs> This one's present in perfumes, which might be a bit surprising to you. And it also turns out to be an attractant for collects mosquitoes. I think putting mosquito attractants in perfumes is one of the last things we want to do. This one isn't too annoying and it is rather amusing. So why don't we put this into F tier? Patelophilone. 
Teleflone is annoying to say, and it's also annoying that it's named this way. It's isolated from the hop tree, which is also known as Telea trifoliata. It's got a rather interesting motif with this alpha beta unsaturated ketone connected to the benzene through a nitrogen, which I think is quite interesting, but the name is definitely upsetting. I think this one's probably going to go into A tier because it's annoying to say, it's annoying that it's called that, but it does have an own, so maybe we'll put it into B tier because it does have a ketone, so part of the name is true. Dextromethorphan. Now, I am not a meth orphan, but I'm sure there's at least one meth orphan listening to this out there. Dextromethorphan is a cough suppressant present in many cough medicines, and it's not a very selective drug. It hits all sorts of receptors, which is often undesired. However, it's also present in mixtures for cough medicine with all sorts of other compounds, which is surprising to think that a drug that just hits so many different targets is also mixed with other drugs that hit other targets. But nonetheless, it's over the counter, and people even give it to their kids. So dextromethorphan is the name too annoying? It's slightly annoying. Even the person who suggested this one spelt it wrong, so I'm going to say the name's kind of annoying. We'll put it into C tier for good measure. But because it starts with a D, why don't we put it into D tier? Periodic acid, which is not how this is pronounced. Actually, it's periodic acid. Periodic acid is annoying because we talk about the periodic table, but this is not periodic, it's periodic. And so we have to say it differently. This is a common oxidant in organic chemistry, and frankly, the name is kind of annoying. I think this is going to go into B tier. If you disagree, you can let me know down below. Phenolphthalene. Phenolphthalene is an annoying one to say. Naphthalene is another one. Phthalic acid. There's several compounds which are quite frustrating. Phenolphthalene is used as a pH indicator. It's probably one of the first chemicals you ever come across in high school. And it has also been used as a laxative, although it's no longer recommended for that application. Phenolphthalene, an annoying one to say and spell. Why don't we put that one into B tier? So we have a few left here. We have congressane, canafug, santalol, hexamethylene tetramine, and constapatic acid. Why don't we talk about constapatic acid? Because the history of this one is quite amusing for me. Constapatic acid was extracted from the Australian leafy lichen called xanthoparmelia constipate, which may not be pronounced correctly, but that's how I would pronounce it in English. Now, the funniest thing about this, if it wasn't just that it had been isolated from a lichen called constipate, it was collected on the schist boulders of West Springton, South Australia. So they dug this compound out of a lichen in schist boulders, which I thought was pretty funny. Constipatic acid, slightly amusing, a little bit annoying. Why don't we put this one into E tier? Congressane. This is a molecule that I'll eventually make an entire video on, probably. Congressane was chosen as the Congress emblem of the 1963 London IUPAC meeting. IUPAC is the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. They had had this as the logo, and they challenged chemists to make it, and they did that within a couple of years. I like this idea of challenging people to make molecules, even if the molecules that are chosen are somewhat arbitrary. So Congressane, does it really deserve the name that it has? No, because it was a molecule from that conference. But that being said, the conference inspired someone to actually go and make it. So maybe the name's all right. Why don't we put it in C tier? I think that's appropriate. Santalol. Santalol is a molecule that I find quite amusing. If Santa's seen you being naughty, I'm sure he'll lol himself. Santalol is a molecule that's present in sandalwood. It's called alpha santalol, if we're being completely honest, and it's a valuable ingredient for perfumes. So they get this from sandalwood oil, which is just distilled. Santalol, it's not a very annoying name. I don't find myself getting too annoyed. I think we could probably put this into E tier. Now, I think we have to end with canafug. However, we still have hexamethylene tetramine. So this one's annoying because hexamethylene, there's six methylenes, but they're not in a row, and it is a tetramine because there's four nitrogens. This makes IUPAC want to pull their hair out. Is this correct? Sort of. If you say hexamethylene, picture hexamethylene in your brain. Okay, that's six methylenes in a row. And then say tetramine. Now you picture four nitrogens in a row. So that's not a very good name. If you can't picture the chemical from hearing the name, it's not a very good name. And so unless you've worked with this specific chemical before, you're not immediately going to think of it. And it sounds a little bit IUPAC, which is misleading. If you hear denatonium, you either think of denatonium or go, yeah, that's not an IUPAC name. If you hear hexamethylene, your brain will start running with it. So hexamethylene tetramine, definitely pretty annoying. I think this can go into A tier. Now, canafug. Canafug is my favorite one. It's an antifungal medicine, and it's often used for vaginal application, and it's also used for application to the skin. Canafug, not this week, sorry. This one can go right into F tier, which is appropriate because FUG starts with F. I hope you've enjoyed this tier list, and I hope you have a great day.